4K. Switch, channel 3. Wow, it's like a it's like a three second delay, huh? Other camera. Can we see the 4K, please? Good, leave it there. Okay, now bring it a little bit towards here. A little more. No, no, no. Good, 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 good. And bring it back to the other camera. Back to this one. Shoulders up. You said plenty, though. You, you said more than I would have ever imagined that you did. You were very eloquent. Oh my yes. God. I, I knew that's the last thing I expected for me. Yeah, uh, me too. Man, I tried. All right, are we ready to record? We got the lower third graphic, Arturo. Lower third, the lower third. Lower third graphic. Is that how your name is spelled? <laughs> wait, 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 he has the spell check. Get closer. Yeah, that's, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's me. You don't have to worry about lines, right? That's me, that's me. <laughs> All right, whenever you guys are ready. Microphone always away from your noise source. Record. Five. You got to give it 10 seconds for a pre roll. And remember, you never say. There you go. Five, four, two, three, and seven. And five. Four, three. Uh, where do you uh, even begin? Uh, it's, uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be where I am today. I uh, would never in my wildest dreams thought that I would work with such a, such people to give me inspiration. Uh, throughout the years, uh, I've spun records. I've been a disc jockey for about 24 years now. I've done all different kinds of functions and events from little kids' birthday parties, quince, sweet 16s. I've always loved media. I've always loved music, audio, production. It's it's always kept me happy. Uh, in the past couple of months, working with the Broward Community College interns, it, I've learned so much myself. Of, so after so many years of doing so many things and having so much experience in the entertainment industry, working alongside with industry professionals such as the, the gentlemen that work here at Reflections Productions and all of the other organizations and places where I've been in the past, I can truly say that these past couple of months have just, that as far as technology goes, and inspiration and knowledge from the kids. I don't consider myself an old man, but uh, <laughs> with, with all of the years and all the different things that, uh, that myself I've personally gone through, I've just experienced so many new things recently that there's just so much to learn, so much to go on, and so much to build. Uh, you, you, myself having a dream of wanting to be awesome and wanting to create things. I truly believe at this time in my life I'm in the right place with the right people. Uh, it's been something truly inspirational. And I just wish to continue to let it grow and to see all of the wonderful things that continue to come from all of the people that are involved in this great industry to try to make it nothing better than what it is, better tomorrow than it is today. There's so much for me to say, and I have absolutely no idea where to start. That's what I got. You guys got any questions for me? Have you uh, learned anything? I have learned that there's different manufacturers that make different components that function different ways. But at the end, the, truly, the true goal of the developers and the people that build and design these tools that we use, the outcome is just to give you something excellent to be able to give you the tools to be able to create something excellent that other people could enjoy as far as you yourself being the creator the developer in order to do that as well we all have different fields where we specialize in 
we may know a little bit more than others and then there's other people that know more about other stuff that we just want to know more about so it's great to surround yourself with good people who want to grow so you can grow along with them yeah what's next what have you learned from the interns you know if i was to actually sit down and, and individually name the interns We'll go ahead and break it down with Dusty firsthand. Some I've just sat down with Dusty to work on some projects, updating cameras and and particular things with particular hardware. Where he says some things that totally blows me away, I have to physically go and ask Google or Yahoo or go search for these things on the internet. I myself I love open format. I'm a web designer. Uh, I love doing audio development as far as composing music or whether it is working with uh, video production and, and editing and special effects and all different kinds of things. And just to sit and listen to some of these things that, that Dusty would say, I'd have to go and do the research myself just to see what it was all about. Now, on the other hand, we have, we have another intern. Her name is Ashley. I don't know what it is about being in the right place at the right time, but it always seems that Whenever you're stuck in that one particular rut, this is one of the interns that just like a flower, like a morning glory that pops out in the middle of nowhere when you weren't even expecting it to be there. Charles, what can I say about Charles? Charles sits back sometimes, uh, he, he listens, he pays attention, and then when it's his turn to, to, to start, he pretty much gathers all of the information of everyone else that he's given. And it's just like the icing on top of the cake after it's come out of the oven and everything else is going on. Um, we've gone through a couple of interns. That not, not everyone has been here for the entire duration uh, to make it to this part to where we are now we're interviewing in front of the camera. But for those interns that have been with us throughout this part of the development, um, man, I think I can't wait till next Tuesday. <laughs> That's what I got. Cut. Stop recording. Cut. All right, so now go to camera two. I'm sorry, camera three. And now you can hit both at the same time. Five, four, take, three. Take, I'm sorry, DSK. Take or auto, I'm sorry. Uh, auto and DSK. Auto and DSK, two take? Uh, not take, auto. Okay. Yeah. Right. So in five, and then you look at the camera. Four, three. Hi, I'm Ashley Heaton. I'm currently an intern at Broward College. South Campus, and today I am here at Reflections Productions. Um, my first day at Reflections Productions, um, I have to say I was very, very happy to be here. Um, oh, uh, stop. Stop. <laughs> That's not open. Then. That's for the blooper reel. <laughs> okay, so GSK2, GSK2. And five, four, three. Hi, I'm Ashley Heaton. I'm from Broward College, South Campus, and I am currently an intern at Reflections Productions. My first day here uh, at Reflections Productions, I was very happy to be here. Um, when I got to meet the producer and the owner, Tom, Mr. Tom Mitchell, um, I have to say he was very, very awesome. He was very, he made me feel very comfortable being here that I was a very novice individual at all of the production uh, equipment that he has, but um, from day one, we have been taken into the production studio and we've gotten to learn different pieces of equipment, different types of lighting, different kinds of microphones, as well as camera equipment. And I do have to say the first time when I walked into the actual production studio on the floor, um, I just felt like as if I was almost like in Hollywood, like I get to work and do these different things that uh, film editors, filmmakers, and um, cinematographers that they get to work with. So I was very thankful for the opportunity to be here and I 
am very, very thankful that everything that I am learning, that it's something that I am given the chance to really retain and hopefully take it out into, um, into my... Okay. You have to really take it. Okay. Do what? Go ahead. Just pick up and go back one sentence. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I'm really happy that uh, what I've been learning here that I can actually take it and I can do it uh, also for myself uh, when I get done with college when I graduate. And um, one thing that I'm very very proud and very happy that I have learned is actually how to work the new tech tricaster. It is actually a piece of broadcasting equipment where I get to learn how to operate multi cameras and I get to learn how to do lower thirds. So it is a piece of equipment that we, you normally don't notice on TV, but when you see your little bugs and you see your names of, let's say for instance, the people that are on the news, um, this is the equipment that is actually being worked on. So that's one thing that I'm very, very happy that I get to learn. and. We have got to go in uh, quite a few places where we have actually interned um, on site where I've got to learn how to put up a stage. I've got to learn how to operate a camera during a live broadcast. And I have also got to, well, you have to learn also how to take down that equipment once your production is over. So I'm very happy that I have learned how to take a production from start all the way to finish. And I'm here and I'm still learning and thank you very much. All right. Uh, you, and when you're done, you're going to hit this auto button. Uh, one more thing, but not yet. Not yet, so you're going to continue on. The difference between learning something in a book and being in charge of a live switch in front of 50,000 people. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> without any warning. Okay, okay. Ready? Yeah. Uh, the difference between learning in a book and learning on an actual production site in front of 50,000 people is a very big difference. And I have to say I'm very thankful for the opportunity that um, I have wonderful teachers at college that teach us um, from the book and in the classroom, but while I've been here on my internship, I've actually got to learn on the spot and have that experience to where you are in the field and it is real time and you have to, ha the production has to keep going. So I'm very thankful that uh, I've had that other side of experience because it is totally different from the book, but it, um, I've gained a different respect for the individuals that do work behind the scenes and that are behind the cameras and behind the stage. Um, we see so many different things on TV and you just don't think about the production that goes to put it together or to take the production down. So one thing I do have to say is I'm very thankful for the opportunity to have a real life experience, or, or I should say multiple experiences that I've done right now um, at being a part of a real time production. And cut, shift, record. After that first week riding back, I, I could feel it in the air. The students were in the car because they're all excited, saying how happy they were that they made this trip. Some have come from as far as Cold Springs just to come down here and homestead. That's a long trip. But they make the journey because it's important to them and what they study. My whole concept of doing this was to get the students out of the lab from behind a computer and get to where they can find out what really happens in a studio. And when I mentioned that to Mr. Mitchell, he felt that it was really necessary for him to do that. And he promised me that he would do it. Every Tuesday, he would devote his time. And for the last three months, every Tuesday, like clockwork, he has been here for the students, starting at 10 in the morning, as long as they want. One of the good things about it is he gave them the opportunity to be first hand on some programs. They went to do the violence calendar, where I was really excited to see them behind cameras. He got them a chance to do all the events that they were doing for the 4th of July where they got behind the cameras and saw them fix things to put a real event together and lights and audio and everything. But one of the most profound things that they had a chance to do, and I think it was an experience, and I'll never forget that day, 
when he did a whole production of them from start to finish for a day with cancer, which is a real serious project. They did this for Relay for Life. And they had people come from as far as the Keys they interviewed, doctors from the hospital, everybody. But what was so good about it, he made them a part from the beginning. They helped with the script. They helped with the storyboard. They helped with setting up the lights. And that day, they felt like I could see the enthusiasm in the students. That day, they felt like they were really doing something. And for that reason, I'd like to talk, thank Miami Go and Thomas Mitchell and his staff. I speak about Mario, who's helped us, and also Arturo and his daughter, Michelle. They have opened up this office like it belongs to the BC students. And I'd like to say this before I stop. If there was any place in Dade County that made me feel like there are good people still in Dade County, my Lego student did that with the owner and his staff. I'd like to mention who made it possible also. Uh, the top and head, Professor Bob Bill, because every week I have to give him a report and he wants to know what's happening with the student. He's very excited. I've been trying to get him down. But one day we will, because I told him it's a must. See, this studio is like an oasis in a desert. Okay, that's it. Peace out. If I had a microphone, I'd drop it. And, 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 and so you were going to tell me that secret about your boss? What was that? Uh, the secret about my boss, he loves my guys. <laughs> like that. That's like those, man. <laughs> Matt. Good, man. Shift record. Good afternoon. Hold on a second. Four directions. Five. I hope she's ready. Let me call. Phone doesn't work in here. No, she has a phone, right? She has a phone. Yes, she's recording. Three, two. Good afternoon. My name is Basil Donaldson, and I'm from Broward College. We're here at Miami Go Studios in South Miami. Behind me is the backdrop of Miami Go Studio, a wonderful studio that I had a chance to bring students from Broward College Multimedia Club to. It all started about four months ago when I had a meeting with Mr. Thomas G. Mitchell and Coffee Dozen about bringing students to. Miami Go Studio just to learn something. After that meeting, I was so excited. They gave me a tour. I went back and spoke to the students, and you wouldn't believe it. It started like wildfire. I took a few photographs with my cell phone, and I said, I have to show it to my professor, the head of the department, and also to the students that I thought might be interested. Before I came down, students were talking about going to different places and you know, doing interns at different places, and they had some places in mind. And I started showing them the photographs of what was the green screen and in the warehouse and around the office. I, before I left, I had about nine students ready to sign up to come down the following Tuesday. When we came down, it was like walking into an oasis. Tom greeted them at the door. And he gave them the nickel tour. But before that, I noticed that the students' eyes were wide open. I mean, they were like mesmerized, that's what they saw. And I was really happy because it seemed to me like they found a new home. When we walked in, he greeted them like they were here for a long time. Even all the staff members they met treated them like a part of the staff. From Mario to Turo to Michelle and everybody else, his son, Sean. Matt in the back. Everybody was just greeting them and with open arms and telling some welcome. And that's a good feeling when you're coming someplace for the first time. They didn't seem lost because Tom took them in the office and I noticed I say, What is going on? It looked like they were sitting at an executive meeting every morning I came down here. He would sit down at his office first thing and go over and you know, teach them things before they get a chance to go and do a hands on experience with all the stuff in the studio and the warehouse and everything else. But he made it possible for them to feel like they, first thing I could tell you, what, they were important. He made them feel like they were special. And when you meet somebody who does something like that for young children in society, that tells you they have a firm grasp on what we need today. I wish they were more like Tom Mitchell. I spoke to my professor, Professor Lovefield, every week I go up and I was telling him, you have to come one day. He hasn't made it yet. 
But while I'm talking now, I hope he will get in person because he needs to come and see exactly what they're doing. It's like magic, really. It's really like magic. That's what I call my ego, a magic studio. Thank you. And cut. And don't forget what I said about my boss. <laughs> And it wasn't hard to talk about you, Carl. I'm telling you the truth. It's not really hard. The truth is there. Give it to 10. Is your truck on fire? Uh oh. Right, the camera's turned off. Uh oh. Turn the power off. Is the battery dead? The battery? I think it needs another battery. The battery is dead. Uh, you should. Can I take a car for it? Hey, I'm holding the spare one right here. Oh, here. Okay, we're still recording, so... My first day coming here to uh, Miami Go, to it was pretty eye-opening. I remember walking through the doors, you know, just going through the building, taking in the air, and it, just, it looked like an office to me. Even going up to, all the way to Tom's office, nice desk, everything, all his memorabilia of the time, it still to me it felt like an office. But then, when Tom showed us to the back studio, that's when my eyes popped. Like, it literally. It almost felt like walking from one world to another. And to me, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget the lectures he tried giving me about DMX and the 512 channels, about uh, Mario explaining the differences and maintenance of cables. <laughs> and I'll never explain, uh, I'll never explain. <laughs> and I'll never forget my first day volunteering out in the field in Hialeah, trying to set up stage. So far to me, those, every one of those is extremely memorable. I'm not going to forget them because they're literally part of me now. And here's hoping that I can only build from there and gain a lot more awesome memories with Miami Go. How's that? Countdown or seconds and five, four, three. Hello, my name is Kevin Martinez. I am a intern in Miami Ghost. And um, what can I say about the experience I've had here? Well, uh, it's been a crazy one, I'll tell you that much. Um, I have had an incredible experience. I, I don't know how much to explain to you. Uh, when I first started multimedia, I it was not even, you know, I didn't think about it as much multimedia. Back then, uh, when I was little, I, I was like, I'm a big movie guy, so I always loved movie. I always loved film and, you know, animation as well in total with that. But um, I never thought, I'm like, hey, I just, you know, that's one thing I want to do one of these days. You know, I just want to go out and you know, become an animator, become a cameraman, become a, a film director, anything like that, you know. And um, being in this uh, studio, it bring it's brought me mo a lot of possibilities towards the, um, you know, bringing those dreams come true. I'm able to touch equipment that I'm probably never going to be able to touch if I had done this by myself. If I had gone somewhere and bought equipment myself, maybe at a pawn shop or something, I'm probably never going to find equipment like this. So it's incredible to be able to touch these type of equipment, learn from people that have experience, you know. Um, there's just, it's incredible to, to see these opportunities and ask to be, to be in these opportunities, be, be one of the people on, on a team that will, that, you know, it's just, I, I'm, a, I'm at a loss of words at it because honestly, it's something like one day I, I'm, I'm just at a cl in my classroom at the lab just touching computers, you know, just playing around with them, learning new stuff. Because, like I said, I've never known anything about multimedia until I joined finally in BC. And now I'm here, and now I know a bit more about 
film. I know more about more about um, camera work, light work, working with you know all the tech around here. It's it's audio as well. I mean, it's it's like a whole new door. It's like opening a new door in a different path that I've you know I've never thought I could get there to. So I'm very grateful for it. And honestly, um, being being here, it means a lot, honestly. I mean, I might not be the one that talks as much. I might be the most quiet one. And, you know, just looking and looking and observing. But as I'm observing, I'm, always, I'm also learning. So it's most of the time when I'm observing, I, it's when I get to learn all these amazing things that these people have here. So I'm very grateful for that as well. Send Dusty in here for me real quick. Ready? No. <laughs> yeah, there okay. we go. Six, five, four, three. Oh, hi there. You don't don't mind me. I'm just handling the second generation VTX. Uh, when you work back here, it's usually hot and sweaty, but that's part of the charm. We had back here. We had that. <laughs> Did I just keep going? Yeah. All right. In Miami Go, I had a lot of, a lot, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I'll just start from the beginning. Hi, my name is Charles, Charles Chavez. And uh, I'm a Broward College intern here at Miami Go. And I had the opportunity to meet all these incredible men and women who work here who were more more than kind to show me and give me all this knowledge. Try to let me know everything that I could possibly know about video production, audio engineering, lighting. At first, like you would expect, it's a lot to take in. It just boggles your mind. But you no, know, as long as you pay attention and you have that can-do attitude, it starts to sink in, slowly but surely. And I really come to appreciate all the hard work that really goes into producing all these live shows, video productions, music, you know, all that stuff. And I hope to, you know, harness all this knowledge that they're trying to give me and put it to good use, you know, try to make my, a name for myself, try to, uh, Try to elevate the game field, as they say. But, yeah, like, uh, keep rolling, keep rolling, I'm giving some pointers. Yeah, give me some pointers. Talk about you were part of a team, you've been working with your father, you were part of a team. Yeah. So when you came, what attracted you, you became a part. Talk about the experience with your father, working with your father. Batman back experience. Yeah. You know, you had an experience of working with your father, and he does this and does it. When you came, it felt just like you were at home because you became a part of the team, just like how you were working okay. with your family okay. business. Talk about that. things you know. Thanks, I needed that. I needed you, that. you understand? All right, let's Put go. your father in there, too. That's why you right. felt Tom has been giving you that experience, the same experience that you have with your father. You understand? Speak about Tom in that way. All right? Okay, tell me when to go. All the past work experience I've ever had was working for uh, my family business, where we manufacture and install granite countertops, kitchens, bathrooms, what have you. And the transition from that industry to the production industry hasn't been all that different. It basically takes teamwork, understanding each other, knowing the tools of your trade. And I know it's a process that's definitely going to take some time, like in any industry, to get a handle on. But uh, I'm more than, more than capable, in my opinion, that I can get it done. And time is on my side, as I'm still in school and I'm only getting better as the more I learn. And Hi, my name is Mario Gabriel Alvarez, and I'm a media specialist with Reflections Productions in Miami Go, Miami Go. 
I was approached to do this project with uh, these uh, young folks from Broward Community College as interns, and I found it intriguing. Um, I've done tutoring, I've done teaching in many different fields, in many different things, uh, but to be able to teach what I know of the one thing that I love the most, other than of course my family, is self-fulfilling. And these kids have been sponges. Now I do say kid because yes, I'm getting to the half century, so I'm not uh, young at all anymore. And to see these kids enjoying the things that I've enjoyed for almost 30 years now, it's incredible. Especially when you see so many advances in technology, so many advances in society that you think, oh no, some of the stuff I do is old, some of the stuff I do, they won't remember. But knowing that I've been able to teach these kids something that they'll be able to take with them throughout their careers, or even if they don't decide to stay in this, that they actually enjoyed and they'll remember with fondness, hey, what else can you ask of anybody? Anytime anybody remembers you, it's always a good thing. Um, hopefully, by the time, I don't know, my kids are their age, I hope that they'll be able to find people like Tom, Arturo, like their teachers from Broward Community College, the administrators that were so helpful in allowing them to come here. I hope they're able to have experiences like that as well. Thanks. And cut. So when we were going to the studio here, um, we would go every Tuesday at around 10.30 well, actually, we depart at around 8, but so be it. And uh, when we go over here, we're actually sitting in the office of the president, Tom, and we're actually discussing what kind of plans we're going to be going for in these projects. And you, they really go the extra mile to teach us how to operate all this equipment and how to actually, you know, how to identify different important parts that really make the show come together. On top of that, they also cover the information regarding the uh, live concerts, the lighting, the, the speakers and all that. There's actually a bit of drone involvement, too big enthusiast of that myself. Um, however, when it comes down to the... I froze again. No worries. You no, 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 don't have to start from the beginning. Right. Hey, hey, they even had a drone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so, while we're still recording. Keep going. They even have a drone. Which interests you a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, I know. And so they've gone the extra mile to actually involve us in some of their events and actually taking us out on the field instead of just staying indoors and keeping us in a little box to teach us. They really go the extra mile to help us learn how to apply our skills in the field and how to actually get familiar with the equipment on the fly. You know, there's a lot of... Cut again. See, if I had time to think about this. All right. There's a lot of what? A lot of I don't knows. Oh, my uh, Okay. Well, there, there, there are a lot of things that you found that you didn't know, but now you're finding out. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier, though. Well, then that's a problem. That's oh, a problem. you can end it with, uh, I'm really into that. Let me just uh, try to top it off with makes you feel part of the team, because that is true. I just wish I could list more things right now. I thought that we did not Yeah, we went on the Apple, Apple Drive. I wanted you to talk about how they make you feel a part of the team. Indeed. Yeah. Who we yell at you? For the reason. Haven't yelled that much yet. Okay, we can do that on the green screen when you get up to the top. Yeah. And cut, stop recording. Stop recording. When you search it, don't say action to change. You're supposed to say ping and you start to talk. So it's five, four, three, two. Hi, my name is Rainier Espendez, and I come from Broward College, born in Puerto Rico. I happened to encounter a lot of uh, discouragement when I was trying to go for animation when I was younger. Ever since I was in middle school and I got my first computer, I started practicing animation. I tried starting out with pencil, then with paper, but really that didn't cut it out because I didn't have the kind of hardware necessary to make it happen. Then I moved on to computers. With computers, I was able to bring out those animations of stick figures, then later with full-on characters. I got a cheap little tablet and I was able to draw for hours. Believe me, all that work really <laughs> came together when you put a lot of effort into it. As a result, uh, simple one-minute animation could take up to several days, so even a week or two. 
Um, I believe one of the greatest aspects that came out of that is that my self-taught knowledge helped me become familiar with 2D animation, 3D animation, and audio editing. The thing that really came to mind, though, is when it, when it comes together to the, to the college. When you have self-taught knowledge and you bring it to the college, it changes everything. It's totally different. Because when you have a passion for animation and film for a very long time, and you don't have the tools and education you need, it can really hold you back. You least expect it, too. As a result, uh, when I came to the college, I thought I knew everything. But when I came to Professor Kota's 3D class, I realized that I was a few notches short of professional, you know, well, to say the least. Thankfully, the college was able to acknowledge that, you know, maybe I had something going on and they help me out as much as I can, even outside of the class requirements. Thankfully, in the 3D development field and the 2D animation fields, there's a lot of film, a lot of film aspects going on, including camera angles, uh, certain shots, rule of thirds, as well as um, certain factors involving audio control when it was involving an Audacity and Adobe Premiere. As a result, the school was able to bring me to um, reflection productions here where they helped me actually develop further, develop these skills further and actually help me apply these skills that I used in the virtual world onto the real world. Turns out that I was missing quite a lot of information that honestly I never thought I would encounter until recently. So with this, I was able to understand how high definition cameras function. There's a lot more going on than I thought there would be. How the audio boards happen to do their job. How there's a TriCaster involved in the development and how much editing is actually involved in these videos. You would think that it was just a couple of tracks lined together and you're just chopping a few bits. Apparently there's a lot more to it than I thought. A lot of audio leveling, filters, compressors. Never thought I'd see it in my life. And so here I am. This has been the presentation with Rainier Spenda from Broward College. Thank you for having me and thank you so much. Okay. I don't know what to say. All right, so we're going to assume that we're recording. This yeah. audio that we're seeing now can be edited out. This can be edited out, and when it fades to you, you're going to start answering whatever question that you were already asked. All right. Yes. Good job. All right. Rainier Espendez, and I happen to be. Okay, we're sorry, sir. Frick, 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 frick. No problem, we're going to put that. Okay, yeah. All right. All right. Wait on, wait on, though. All right. Hi, my name is Rainier Espendez, and I come from Broward College. And so, for a while, um, I've been getting a bit of discouragement from, from a lot of the fields that I've been trying to go for. The longest standing desire that I've been wanting to go for in my life is for film and animation. Film and animation has been strongly appealing to me because it brings the imagination to life. It allows me to bring all these passions and put them on the big screen. However, I also like to do this for other people, not just for myself. However, this process was not, was not always easy, and there was, there was a lot of uh, discouragement along the way. Thankfully, I persevered through the use of open source software and self-educated at home. However, the things didn't, didn't stop there. When I came down to Broward College, I picked up a lot of new skills that I otherwise would not have known. See, self-taught knowledge is great and all, but sometimes a little professional help can really take you very far. Um, as a result, now I've been well-versed in web design, um, film, well, excuse me, not film, but video editing, uh, animation, as well as 3D animation, both fields. So as a result, uh, I've been introduced to a lot of new opportunities. Thanks to Broward College, I've also been introduced to Miami Go. Miami Go is something new that I never thought I would experience in my life. Because it's just something new that really was outside of my skill set originally, but then somehow expanded further on existing ones. For example, when we're, when we're doing the filming work here, or when we're messing with the camera, with the audio, and other equipment, it takes me back to how we were messing with 3D software, where we have virtual cameras, virtual models, virtual systems. But when you have to replicate that in real life, it's totally different. It's not like clicking a couple of buttons and, and pushing a few sliders on the computer. This is totally different. You have physical hardware to mess with. And to be honest, it offers a lot higher fidelity than I thought. As a result, now I'm learning a whole lot of stuff that, honestly, 
I never thought I'd see in my life. Um, don't know what to say to that. Stop, stop, stop. Cut, 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 cut. You always forgot what to say after that. Uh, When I was in high school, I had no idea what I wanted to be. I was fascinated by the arts and the slide projectors and the movie projectors. And I remember buying my first mirror ball for $10, a piece of styrofoam, with plaster, and homemade mirrors. I couldn't afford to go to college, but I enjoyed the arts. So I would start buying equipment. My first DJ system was 20 watts per channel sound system, $500 loan from Radio Shack. And I didn't even realize I needed a mixer. There was never anybody really there for me, but I enjoyed the arts and I found something that I enjoyed doing. I started buying more equipment and more equipment. And Miami Go is my payback. I enjoy being in the studio I enjoy having the opportunity to share the knowledge and learn, because we never stop learning. I find that the interns that I've worked with have taught me more than maybe I've taught them. Sometimes I forget that they may not even know what an XLR is, free pin my cable, but they know how to fix an issue with the TriCaster. And I've been very fortunate to have this crew to share this. Miami Go is meant to be the spirit of our community. People coming together, enjoying what they enjoy doing. Finding a way to making money and continuing to grow. My mind is totally blank. Go ahead, ask your question. Initially, when I first met you, you said you really wanted to do something with students and you were excited about the thought of working with Ralph College students. I went before we did the ID. When we first came down, I saw the, the excitement in your eyes. Could you, could you just say, you know, when you saw them coming and the students walking, how did you feel about the opportunity to work with this group of students? And how have they been? I've been a very self-taught person. I want to learn something. I go buy a new audio mixer. I don't even read the manual. I plug it in and I try to operate it. Then there's a new lighting console. It's been, in a way, very lonely because I've been having to teach myself by myself. I've been fortunate to have a crew from Reflections, which is very much a family of six guys that do 100 shows a month here in South Florida, from stage and sound, lighting, now video. And as I get older, I figure there's got to be something that I can do that I'm not lugging big speakers. Something I could do and sit in a wheelchair and sit in air conditioning. And Miami Go came around. And the first time I got interns, fresh minds coming into my office that not only I could share with, but I could learn from. Most people today of our generation think very different and find that our rewards and our faster thinking and our multitasking is coming from fresh minds. The interns, when it came in, it was exciting to be able to, to, to share. And it was more exciting when they didn't want to hear just one thing. They didn't want to hear just about video. They didn't want to hear just about drones. They wanted to hear about the sound system and the lighting system. And who would think somebody would be interested in generators and electrical and cabling? But I found sponges. And not was I only sharing with them, but they were sharing with me. Together, we would tackle a project. We would sit at the table and, and figure out, well, this doesn't work. Why? And one of the most interesting things that we found out 
we had a problem with the TriCaster. And tech support couldn't even answer it. But together, the intern sat down and we analyzed. The intern, the younger generation, not my generation, were born on cheat codes of Pac-Man and Donkey Kong. Well, the TriCaster was built the same way by these engineers that grew up on the Donkey Kongs and Pac-Man. And having that fresh minds in the studio, we were able to rethink the way we look at issues and problem solving. To have their energy and to have their thirst for knowledge increased my thirst for knowledge, and together we grow. The one thing that I ask of my interns, pay it forward. There was nobody there for me to teach me other than having the resources, getting fresh equipment, and plugging it in. Well, here we have state-of-the-art video, state-of-the-art audio, state-of-the-art sound, lighting, electrical, stages. And we have the opportunity to be hands-on. Pay it forward. That's what I ask. Some people have referred to Miami Go as my hobby. Yes, we built these studios a couple of years ago, and we've practiced aiming lights, we've practiced cameras, and we've purchased 4K cameras, and we've kept up with the technology. But to practice is different than the real world. Our first TV show was called A Day With. We were very fortunate to get Channel 10's Gwen Belton to come in and MC it for us. We had to learn what a teleprompter was. We had to learn what a script was. We had to learn the various angles of lighting. And we had to learn the green screen and digital sets. Cut, and I'll continue in a moment. Brain fart. What was the, what was the, oh, the TV show. Then we move forward to our new project. Episode two, and then we move forward with our new project. Episode two, a day with cancer. My interns and I have gotten together and gone on remote shoots. We've had survivors come into the studios. We've talked with administrators of Baptist Health Systems, and we've even received emails from the White House and Vice President Joe Biden. A day with cancer gives us real time real-world TV production, under the pressure of a gun, under the pressure of the clock, ticking, learning, creating, problem-solving on the set, internships coming alive, professional production coming alive, together as one concisive unit. Um, If you ever have a chance, reach out, because some of the most unlikely areas can provide excellent hands-on opportunity for internships. And stop recording. Okay, now we need the next set. Who 